Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts takes viewers behind the scenes at archives, museums, and historic sites. Earlier this year, historian Richard Norton Smith led a 10-day bus tour from Asheville, North Carolina to Austin, Texas. The group stopped at several presidential and historic sites along the route. One of the stops was the James K. Polk Ancestral Home in Columbia, Tennessee, the only surviving home except the White House in which the 11th president lived. John Holtzapple, director of the Polk Home, led this tour. Come on in. This can open this other door. Welcome to come on all in. I think you can fit in here. Right away, one of you here pointed out the portraits behind you and asked, are they both James K. Polk? And they sure are. Both painted by uh, George Peter Alexander Healy, who painted uh, a lot of the early 19th century presidents. He, I think as, as far as Ulysses S. Grant, he was painting portraits. Uh, the one to the left was painted right near the end of Polk's first year in office. He was 49 when, years old when he was elected in 1844, the first man younger than 50 to become president. He's 50 years old in that portrait. Uh, Healy painted the other portrait of him, uh, showing him less than three years later. And look how the job's taking its toll. Uh, uh, Polk described the presidency as years of incessant labor, anxiety, and responsibility, and it shows. Another insight into Polk and his work habits, we have a, a description that Polk wrote that after one White House dinner, he and his company were entertained by a juggler. And uh, in the diary, he wrote that most of the people in the audience enjoyed the performance, but he didn't find it very edifying. He called it time unprofitably spent. So this, again, workaholic constantly at his desk. Uh, Sarah's portrait uh, to the left there, a companion painting uh, of that younger image of James K. Polk. There was an eight years age difference between the two. Uh, he was 28 and she was 20 when they married. Uh, she's 42 years old in that portrait. A gracious, elegant first lady, and also fairly ahead of her time with her conspicuous political interests. And I, I say conspicuous, uh, as first lady, any involvement was definitely behind the scenes, but, but folks in Washington knew that she was, was interested in politics and that she was, was adept and knowledgeable about politics, too. Okay. Uh, we can go upstairs. When James K. Pope lived here with parents and brothers and sisters, all these upstairs rooms had been bedrooms. But once again, we had surviving furnishings from other places. We gathered furnishings from Sarah's widowed years here. She was 45 years old when James K. Pope died. She lived 42 more years, lived to be 87. A, a proper Victorian widow, she wore black. She was in mourning the whole time. Like the portrait here shows her. 30 years after James K. Polk had died. And, I mean, to me and to most of our visitors, it looks like she's right back from the funeral with the dress and, and the veil still hanging behind her head. Uh, still an elegant lady. On the bed, we have some of her fashion items, the gloves, the shawls, the cape, uh, all quite stylish, but all appropriate for a widow. She really spent a lot of her widowed years trying to preserve her husband's legacy. She was already worried, not long after he died, that. He was being a forgotten president. And then certainly after the Civil War, that was a, a real concern for her. She did save all his belongings, uh, made a conscious effort to do that. And it's become a, a treasure trove for uh, historians and archivists and museum people. Most of Polk's papers are at the Library of Congress. This is before the age of the presidential libraries. But we have by far the largest collection of the Polk belongings here, thanks to Sarah Polk and her great-great-niece, who's the founder of the James K. Polk Memorial Association, the nonprofit group that operates this site. 